right. So hello, camera land. Um, my uh, camera's at my school. This is weird. I'm looking at my phone now. You see, it's moving. Sorry. <laughs> um, trying this out. The picture's probably going to be a whole lot better, oddly enough. But um, got been moving stuff around. I'm going to do another video updating saying what all's happening because there's there's a lot of changes going on. Good stuff. Landed the body on the Spit 6. Um, got the frame mostly done. I'll, I'll do another video later. Anyhow, this one I'm talking about, my uh, the Spitfire. You see it out there? No, I got the door closed because of the noise. Um, God, it's hard looking at this camera and not at the screen seeing where I'm at. So disconnect with the eyes. Sorry about that. Um, 1500. Uh, it is. I started losing compression in the fourth cylinder. Uh, tested it. You know things were like shaky. And then so um, what I got was like 135, 135, 150, then 10 psi in the fourth cylinder. Um, so it's gonna do full engine rebuild. But that's my daily driver, and I hate being without it for a while. Um, and this is still taking like two months. Um, there, a different point of view. Uh, so I've got. Here's the head. Everything's cleaned up, pulled it. Um, the head was at the machine shop for like three months, which is no fun. Because um, again, I'm, I'm having to drive my old pickup truck, which is like a, you know, 94 Ford Ranger. Nothing exciting. Drove that for like seven years before getting back into fun cars. Anyhow, long story with st stuff like that. But I'm going to tell you kind of what all I've done so far. After I throw that on the ground and pick it back up. This thing here is what I'm about to talk about in a little bit, if it's what's in focus. Okay, so here we go next. Okay, so here is the four-cylinder head. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this little thing here. Because it came through the exhaust side. If we flip over again. Um, so, you know, these things had the fuel emissions... Um, gear, which is part of what this is talking about. This, this video, video is probably going to be under um, because that's what this stuff's about and this for the 1500. Um, so these, I removed the air rail that was going across that went around down to the air pump that did things inside the engine. And so I did this in a previous video. I used these little Allen set screws in here with some Loctite to plug that. Everything's good there, but... What I didn't know until I took the head off was that it also had these little fluted things in here that went down, and then, oh, my blocks are going everywhere. Oh, there goes my light. Um, here it is. So you can see here it comes in the exhaust side, and I can only imagine that restricts um, airflow. So, taking little those boogers out. And where you see it, um, you can't see it now because I didn't push it all the way through, was you see the little hole coming out through there. So I guess it was um, doing air or something. I don't know. It needs to go. So what I did, since it's fluted, it has to go out the way it came in. Punch. Let's see. Can I feel it? Ah, oh, there it is. And tapped it with the hammer. Pushed it out. Came out the other side. Pulled it out. Rubbish bin. So, um, what I'm doing now is I'm going to work on porting and polishing this to get a few extra, a little bit of more power. So it was already really fun to drive. And now um, I'll have decent compression. Uh, should be even more fun to drive. And then just... All the fun stuff. So, tell you what I'm doing so far. Well, I had it out, but I can't find it now. Oh, that's still attached. So, porting and polishing. What that's doing is you get these little ridge lines in here, and you're trying to smooth things out. Um, oh, I should say about this particular engine. I have my light in a better way. So, cylinder one, cylinder four, cylinder three was getting, oddly enough, the best compression, but the valve seat was just, like, absolutely pitted, just, like, really gnarly, and I didn't think I'd be able to get it 
to um, seat properly. So, got a new valve seat. That's what I took it to the machine shop for. Um, there's a little ridge here. Not the happiest with that. I'd rather be, you know, I was hoping they'd get a flusher uh, press, but there's kind of like a little can't chamfer right there. So the whole reason for it. Um, and I, it's, it's messy because I've been mess working with it already. Cylinder 4 found out where the problem was. So they made a little mark there to there to show me, you know, the trouble area. Or actually, I guess they did it for zone reference. Um, but they went ahead and cut 45s on all of the the valve seats, which is great. And in doing so, because they were cutting the one for this one anyhow, in doing so, he found that it was like, it was way shallow th here through here. So, this is the whole reason I was losing compression on the cylinder. You know, taking these things apart, it's, it's, it's a really fun puzzle, and to me it's always important to figure out what was causing the problem in the first place. So, Found the problem, found the secondary problem that wasn't really a problem, wanted to fix it anyhow because while I'm in here, need to be doing all the things. Um, then found out what that problem is, and then overall cleaning everything up to make it even better. Um, then, so what I did is I took Dremel tool, I got the stone cutting blade. Um, I know I'm an amateur at this. Some people are going to roll their eyes, but I didn't want to use the, the carbon... Uh, drill bits because those things are super those things things are more aggressive and I've had been, been working with some of them on some metal stuff They just like jump out of my hand and like do their own things and what's the super most important is to not let That touch this inner ring Where the the valve and the seat are gonna mate we need that as smooth and homogenous as possible so Painstaking really in tight you can see in here with the lighting where I smoothed that groove out a little bit So basically came in with that just Crazy gentle. I'm not doing a major job in here um, Anywhere I find any kind of ridge with my fingers Just bare fingers and then just smooth and soften it out um, There's documents online about this now There are some places where there's like a little bit of bump and I had the the I really kind of wanted to uh, smooth it more, but I know there's some water jackets or whatever it's called, passageways going through here, and I don't want to break that. And so I'm, I'm being super mild with all of this. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set up the camera on the tripod for that, is there's the little bumps in here, smooth some of that out, and then I got... The sanding piece in here, some really gentle abrasion. Then I'm going to come in with a Scotch Bright pad and some WD 40 and just kind of get it looking nice. And then on this side, it really looks pretty good. But there's some things like here. It's not exactly. You can see that line's not straight. I'm just going to kind of kiss the edges a little bit, but the round parts look pretty good. I'm going to have it felt in here if there's anywhere where there's a little spot, you know, stuff to, to clean up there. So that's that. All right, so I'm going to stop right there and talk a little bit about what I was doing um, and what my thinking was behind all this because that's, you know, I think about like, okay, why well, I'm, the purpose of doing things, you know, and like the purpose of uh, even putting these videos out there. And one of the big things I'm, 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 I guess I'm trying to do is like share my thinking because, um, and watching other people's videos, that's one of the things I learn the most from is just like learning how they're thinking, um, which helps me to, yeah, that, that's the exciting stuff. It's all these is all big puzzles, which is really fun. Um, so 
come over here. Let's see, can I flip this over? Oh, I can. All right, so um, you noticed I was using flashlights extensively because that way I could see what the hell I was actually doing. Um, and then also it highlighted where the ridges were and where I was having a hard time with seeing things. And so talk about some of the things that I found on this 1500 head is one of the biggest places that I needed to smooth out was right here on the uh, the intake side. And this is the, the bottom part of it. Um, there's a pretty big ridge right in here on all of them. Now, you can see that, yeah, I think, see there, see those holes on this side? And so I think that might be like a hole for the stud, but you still don't want that leak. And you can feel like a bump there, and I didn't want to like even get close to it. So there's some, some you know, and you can even see here, there's, there's a little bump in there. But the big thing is that the, the transition is smooth. And if I were to get more aggressive in there, I might puncture a water sleeve or one of the holes for the head bolts and then lose compression. And then, you know, that's, that doesn't do any good at all. And so, you know, a couple of these exhaust ports were, you know, had some casting little issues. So I uh, cleaned those up some. And again, you can feel the bumps in there. Anywhere there's like those bumps, I'm not messing with that. Um... There's just a couple of little ridges in there, and so that's that. I think with the uh, the little stone grinder, uh, don't have to be as super careful on this side as you do on the combustion chamber side. Oh, another thing I've seen some people doing, I meant to say, is right here, this ridge, smoothing this ridge out. And I thought about that, but I don't want to do that today because... Um, one, this is like a whole bunch of extra stuff and really fine tuning. I'm, I might do this on the GT6 engine, but need to have like the volume um, exactly equal in all four of these cylinders to get a much better balance, better performance, blah, blah, blah. And so like if I go shaving just a little bit here and a little bit here, I might have, I might be off by like um, a cubic centimeter or a milliliter, same thing, and, and differences in here. And that may have the potential of throwing off any kind of gains that I'm doing. So figure better to just leave it how it is and, and not mess with that. Um, but that is something you can do as far as part important polish from Red or Red. There's an amazing document on the internet. Um, maybe I can figure out how to post links to things on these channels. And um, it, this guy, I can't remember his name, he talks about all the performance gains you can make on a Spitfire. And, um, you know, these cars are so fun to drive. And one of the fun things about it is, like, making all the... Uh, upgrades, even making it even more fun, and then getting to know it and being personalized with it. And there's like Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. If you ever read that, um, I'm going off on a tangent, but that's uh, that that had an effect of me on me back. God, I read that like 25 years ago, something like that, as a teenager. Um, and it affected how I go about interacting with machines because it's like you know you get in there you turn the wrench you know everything you know what's going on something starts making a funny noise you're running through the processes in your mind and it's like you you figure it out you take it apart and you see ah that was totally it and then it feels amazing and you fix it and you know you feel connected like more one with your machine and it's fun so right so i did that next i'm going to get out these little boogers here clean out just a little smooth out a little bit in there and then we're going to go down to Scotch bright, get a little bit finer, make everything clean, and then all the clean stuff too. Um, the people were supposed to skim the head, and they didn't. Um, I guess they were just overwhelmed with stuff, whatever. This it was still sealing well, so I don't think it's the end of the world. And this is the '76 model 1500s, got the higher compression head. So, um, you know, if this was the uh, any of the other 1500s, I probably would have had them skim. I think there's algorithms somewhere, but I haven't looked them up to raise the compression a little bit. But um, anyhow, sticking with what I got, it's good.
Okay, so there was a time lapse of that. Um, I usually use my, my I've, I got like a camera camera that um, I tend to use and I can control how fast the, the time lapse is so it didn't get too long um, in the computer, but I'm doing this, I did time lapse on the phone. Uh, so I don't know, we'll see how that turned out. Anyhow, uh, you probably saw what I did. I was using the sanding wheels, like a mild sanding wheel on the Dremel tool. And it's, it's it, it cuts enough, but I'm trying to keep things like really, really mild as far as abrasives go because this is the first time I've done this. So I'm not being like extra careful and cautious, um, but it looks really good. I'm, I'm liking what's going on. Um, so let's dive in here. Um, so get the flashlight out. You can see it's all nice and shiny looking in there. You know, you can see I didn't get everything 100% um, because there's some little bumps in there, like I was saying, there's the sleeves and stuff. They even got the exhaust side some too. Um, I'm, I'm actually pretty stoked with how it's looking. It's hitting in a mega aggressive port job or anything like that, but it's smoothing it out quite a bit. And, um, you know, I, I can't measure the, the power gains because it wasn't... Um, was only getting three cylinders before and apparently never got four solid cylinders so it's gonna be a big power gain regardless but I mean it looks a hell of a lot better and this I, I don't think I mentioned before but everything was just caked in carbon in here I mean it was gunkified but looking here I got just a little bit in the exhaust sides I don't think that's super important um, the intake Ooh, look how shiny that is quick wipe down so we can get the dust out of there. Look at one of these. Oops, flashlight in the way. Okay, so that's the intake ones and I put a tiny little camphor on the edges here because I read to do that somewhere. Um, then what else I had? Like I said, trying to go as mild as possible. Yeah, this this little sanding wheel is toast. I only used one of these. I got a couple of them, a couple of boxes of these. But getting all the carbon off and whatnot. Now I did have advantage of that. Let's see, I can even find it now, which is a good sign. One of these I was working on. I got a little too fast. It came out and it it touched like the block just a little bit. You may have seen, and I got the. Scotch Bright pad to rub on it some, and I'm not seeing that mark. It may have been right there. Nope. Yeah, right there anymore. Look at that, it just rubs right out. So, benefit of being extra safe and going slow, not using anything too aggressive. So, what I'm going to do now, okay. Scotch Bright, this stuff's awesome. Um, I'm going to I'm going to clean up on the insides a little bit more with Scotch Bright. Uh, now. The intake side, um, does that work? Hey, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't take many selfies. I haven't take, taken many at all, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, I'm older than I look, but especially when like, I shave, it makes me look mega young. Um, but uh, yeah, I've heard it's not, it's to leave a little bit of, um, what is there? Texture in there is kind of good because it's got the cold. I mean, the whole purpose of this is to improve airflow. So flow air flows faster, more efficiently through, so it breathes better. So it's kind of like uh, these cars are kind of like fire breathing dragons in a way, which is really wicked. Because uh, you know, this is what like this thing's all about is like um, blowing stuff up and getting power out of it and turning wheels and flying around corners. Um, but anyhow. I've been wanting to do stuff like this forever, and I've, I've been doing research forever, a bunch of, a long time on a lot of this stuff, and I can't tell you how many years back I read some kind of article that was talking, I think it was a NASCAR engine builder, and what he was doing was ex crazy experiments on engines, and one of the things that he did was coming in here, he did, um, is it on this end? Yeah, he put little, little with his Dremel to little golf ball type divots in there? to help uh, maximize the airflow. And he said when he tore down the engines later, there's less carbon buildup. Um, that's a little bit, I'm, I'm, I'm a little scared to go there for now. Um, I don't know, I might.
might do more research, find out. I got this whole GT6 engine to build too. Um, but yeah, that's why we have the dimples on the golf balls is that they're a little bit more aerodynamic and flow better. So that's why it's good not to have like everything like, you know, super mega polished. Um, and I think it's just mostly important on the intake side. So that's that. I'm going to come in here with scotch Bright, clean stuff up. Actually, I'll probably go ahead and end the video here because that's going to be boring me just scotch brighting stuff. And then I get to put everything together, which is awesome because I've been down for two months on this car. Um, clean everything up. There's a lot of clean up because there's all these little shavings in here. I don't want that getting anything. So a lot of uh, WD-40, blow in air, all this stuff. Get it look like brand new, spanking clean, slap it in there. I got new water pump as well, too. Um, while that was, uh, I think that was leaking just a little bit. While I had everything out, stripped everything down, painted it. So instead of a ugly yellow fan, I got like a cool looking red fan now that matches the color of the car. Painted the radio pipe silver, all this stuff. So anyhow, um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and end this there. But I wanted to also give a shout out. There's, there's a lot of other um, channels doing cooler stuff than me. Um, and or yeah, I don't know, equally cool, cooler people that know more what they're doing or don't know as much, and they're also doing this. Um, so uh, there's a guy, Steve's Project Garage. Hey, Steve, um, had a video. He was shouting out other big pages, and so I was like, God, he mentioned me. So I was like, okay, I, I haven't made a video in a while, and uh, my camera's at my school. I, I have a kung fu school. That's what I do full time. So that's that's the name of the school, Dragon Phoenix. Um, but that's not for this, and. Uh, so figured to grab something else I got, and I, I think the video quality is a lot better on this thing, but it's a little bit different, tricky, normal, to, tricky to use. I'll figure it out. I got to somehow figure out how to get this in the computer, and logistics, all that. But anyhow, all right, that's it for the video. Um, looking forward to having a running car by the end of the week. All right, later. All right, so actually, I figured I'd make a bit of a postscript. So I'm putting in. I was debating about filming this part, but anyhow, um, first time we've done this too. I got junk in my face. Um, putting, I'll oh, flip that around, in, pressing in the valve stems, um, a little bit nervous about this, but it worked beautifully. So what I got, new valve stems, and, you know, brass is super soft, just really gently tapping them just to kind of get them a little bit set in there, making sure they're straight and everything. And then, there's this little collar or sleeve or whatnot, this was a, just a piece of scrap I had, um, kicking about, as they say, and hit it on the grinding wheel, measure with the caliper, so on and so forth. Over here, at the top of that, pressing it down, and measuring with the calipers, and it's like right spot on. Um, the, the book said, give or take 25 thousandths, but um, 9.5 is like where you want it to be. So I did two of those, feels great, and... Um, yeah, so it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Um, there we have it.